Sand. That's what causes a natural pearl to form, or so we are told. So right now we can see that the water has lots of sand suspended. Now, if we had a couple of oysters there, and some of the sand got inside, how many pearls could we possibly get from just one oyster? Now, imagine that water conditions continue the same for hours, or even days. So do your math. How many grains of sand do you think get inside an oyster? And let's say it's lifetime of maybe five years. So, if sand is not the cause for natural pearls to form, what is it? That's what we're trying to find. So for this experiment, we will use a, l a little bit of our local sand, which is uh, kind of gritty around the farm, and some pebbles. We have two native rainbow lip pearl oysters, Teria sterna, which you can see they're very clean inside. These are farm raised individuals, two years old. So it's time to introduce well, a couple of spoonfuls. Most people would say that is enough, but uh, let's add a little bit more. Now we can examine the oyster and we can see it's full of sand. So, make no mistakes, we have more than one grain of sand inside an oyster. Royster number two, once more, spoonful and a little bit more. Once more, a little peek inside, and we can see that the oyster is full of sand. Okay, now the oysters are placed inside a little water tank with salt water, of course. And you can see that some of the sand actually came out of the oyster. They're so full of sand that that just had to happen. But it's not all the sand we place inside. Okay, oyster number two, a little bit more sand. But you can look inside the oysters and you can still see there's plenty of sand available. Now we're using time-lapse software to take a video of the oyster's intense activity for the next 18 hours. And here you can see the oysters actually releasing sand clouds out of their bodies. This happened after about three hours in the water tank. So they close their bulbs next sale water and sand now at this point we are actually seeing the oysters release little things let's call them like mucus packets and these uh, are basically bits of mucus that concentrate the sand and the oyster, well, they just release it into the environment. What we see now are a couple of photos in which we can see step by step how the oysters are releasing the mucus packets full of sand outside of their bodies. This happens somewhat fast, so it was easier to do it step by step and you can see the little packets I mean they're not large but this is sufficient 
In a couple of hours the oyster will have cleaned most of its shell. Okay, this is next morning. And now we're going to take the oysters out and examine them. We can also see that the water tank has lots of sand. Most of the sand is out of the oyster's body by now. And uh, please do notice that the oyster has a trail of mucus. Uh -huh. I'm going to use my finger to move and or caress the mucus. And you can see it coming out of its body. It still has sand in it and it's the oyster is using this mucus to get rid of the sand. Now the second pearl oyster comes out and we can also see more mucus. At the bottom of the tank we can see the sand that was left behind. Well at this point we have to open up the oyster to look inside its body and see if we can find sand. Remember it was about one and a bit spoonfuls of sand so if the oyster was not able of releasing the sand of, out of its body it should still have a lot and yet here the animal is open and it's mostly clean. 18 hours And here, what we can see is mucus. Uh -huh. We can see how it's so efficient. It catches sand and the oyster then releases it. So if this uh, oyster had the chance of continuing cleaning its house for, I don't know, maybe another day, it would have been perfectly clean. But here we can see how the mucus and the sand come together and that's what we were seeing on the video on the time-lapse video before just sand and mucus coming out of the oyster slowly but efficiently this was um, something unexpected but we found a mud blister pearl on the same oyster. So I used uh, my scalpel to crack it open and out comes the perpetrator, the small bioterrorist, a little drill worm, genus Polydora. And uh, we've seen natural pearls associated with the worm before. And I'm trying to pick it up. Unfortunately uh, my camera doesn't have a very good zoom so we won't be able to see this little creature in detail but you can see it's kind of like a red colored drill worm. I'm going to place a, a diagram of it so you can see it better. There it goes. Polydora. Probably Polydora ciliata. Well, this is the culprit. 